a proportion measures the fraction of observations that have some characteristic. For example, we might say that 50% of college students are females, or 67% of shoppers use coupons, or 25% of voters vote for a particular candidate. Sample proportions are asymptotically normally distributed. That means the more observations we get, the more normally distributed the sample proportions are. The rule of thumb is if you multiply the number of observations you have by the sample proportion, and again multiply the number of observations by 1 minus the sample proportion. And if both of those numbers are greater than 5, then you have enough observations that you can assume that the sample proportion you're dealing with is normally distributed. Let's look at a historical example. In the 2000 presidential election, George W. Bush was running against Al Gore in the state of Florida. As the election drew to a close, pollsters took a sampling of voters. Based on a sample of about 10,000 votes, pollsters concluded that Al Gore would likely win the state of Florida. How did they do this? They looked at the sample of 10,000 votes, and amongst these 10,000 votes, 51.6% of the people voted for Al Gore. Now, you might say that there's no way that we can tell who's going to win this state of Florida because we're only looking at 10,000 votes, and there were 8.3 million registered voters in Florida at the time. We can use this sample of 10,000 votes to construct a confidence interval. Our confidence interval is the estimate, in this case, the sample proportion of votes going to Al Gore, or 0.51. Six, plus or minus the standard error of the estimate. The standard error of a proportion is the square root of the proportion times 1 minus the proportion divided by the number of observations in the sample, or in this case, 0 0.005. We're making a 99% confidence statement, so the critical value here is plus or minus 2.576. Based on these 10,000 observations, the media concluded that there was a 99% chance that the population proportion of votes that would go to Al Gore would be somewhere between 50.3% of the vote and 52.9% of the vote. And because even on the low end of 50.3% of the vote, the proportion of votes going to Gore was above 50%. Therefore, the media was 99% certain that Al Gore would win Florida. Of course, as it turns out, George Bush won Florida, which means that either the sample the media looked at was not random, or by random chance, the confidence interval that they calculated did not in fact include the true population proportion.